Boom. Ta-da. What's up, baby girl? You good? Yes. How are you? I'm excited. Good. Not as excited as me. I said, what? I, I get to have nah, a little talk with, no, a, with a gospel I lady. I, re I remember when I was exited and I got to hug your neck the last time I was there. Oh, so I'm super excited. I'm super I'm excited. I'm glad man. you came by. So how are you feeling today? I'm feeling amazing. You know what? COVID-19 has done wonders for me. I have great things going on in my life. Ooh, I wish I could give you the exclusive right now. <laughs> but a brother real happy. Uh, everything is going good. The music is good. Uh, my weight loss is doing amazing. I'm still in the gym. Uh, just everything's good. Worked a major land deal yesterday. I'm just going to go crazy. Let's see. Beautiful. So you yeah. squeezing it. And you mentioned COVID-19, and you've been out there making it happen, being the arms and the legs of God. Tell people yeah. some of the things that you're doing personally and your church. You're, you're making it happen. Yeah. Let me say this, first of all, just for you to mention that makes me happy because we're all known as artists and writers and singers and legacies and all of that. But what I've learned to do is, and I learned it from a young age, grandma taught us how to give back. So what we do is I have what I call gift share. And uh, the homies from another state showed up with a big truckload of couches and tables and beds and all kinds of furniture. And they told us that we, and we could sell it and be a blessing. We sell nothing at our church. Amen. We about that. So we were able to give back. And in giving back, um, we do it all the time. So COVID-19 did not catch New Life Fellowship by surprise because we're constantly in the street. Um, street ministry on steroids. So we got 63 See? programs to hit the corner. So for my birthday week last week, I have a desire to feed 1,500. We end up feeding 3,000 families. We went hard, and I was so grateful. Listen, I was preaching. I was screaming, telling everybody, just stop by, pull up, and blow your horn. And we were able to be a blessing. Awesome. So I love that part of what we do. And I really thank you for asking that. That's beautiful. Wow, you fed double. Okay, you had a little Jesus increase going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, a double increase. Hey, multiplied <laughs> the fishes and the five loaves. That's a beautiful thing. Now, you mentioned, I'm, 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 excuse me if I go all over the place, because I'm just happy to be talking with you. You mentioned a truckload of furniture, and you, you changed people's life with it. Yeah. Now, those of you who follow Pastor John P. Key, you in there, you you on the Jesus tip preaching, and as a carpenter, what you doing? When did this start? Let me tell you, that's funny you said that. I saw I something, a, I said, wait, what are you, what are you doing? Right, right, I bought a new house, well, right before, let me testify, right before COVID-19, I had everything in line. I was gonna do this, I was gonna get married, I was, yeah. gonna, do I was gonna do everything. And when, when, when the pandemic hit, I slowed down and I was like, you know what, maybe I need to redirect. And God said audibly three things to me, who am I? And I began to say, you know, hold up. I've been teaching, banging this faith through the word of God to the people on the street in the church. And now it's my time to live. And I need everybody to know I stepped out on faith. I really did. And when I tell you God blessed, like beyond measure, I stepped out on faith. I start building furniture. You know, I always had that little bug in me. I, I built some things before. But I was, my, my girls, my, my daughters came and said, Daddy, we love these round beds. They saw them in a, a magazine. I said, oh, I could build that. Look so at you. I, I built entertainment centers. I've, I've been acting a fool. I got a 10,000 square foot house. So I filled it up with John B. Key furniture. How dope is that? That is beautiful. I feel so that. Really, uh, something came on my timeline. I was like, he made it? This joker yeah. doing everything. Yeah, I'm going to be doing it. I'm going to be getting it in. You feel me? That <laughs> is beautiful. I love that. But is that something, is it just because you got a new space and you did that, but all your life, no, you know, no, at the no, young time? No, because no, I have furniture. Uh, and that's another thing. For years, um, um, as, as I would purchase a house, I would always want to um, surprise the kids or surprise the family. So I would always buy new furniture, kind of put that in storage. So it really wasn't, everybody was like, okay, so you couldn't afford furniture. I had furniture, which was a blessing, because in this gift share, I was able to give away stuff wow. that I purchased. So yeah. it worked out real, real well. So that, I'm a painter. People don't know this, but I've got over 260 pieces of artwork that I've done. I have not celebrated or even went to that area yet, personally. So when they stop buying my music, I'll put the little hat on and I'll start. Switch! I, I, right. I, I, have a, I have a few pieces in some 
celebrity homes and my mama's homes. And that's yes. how I do that. My kids have that book too. My youngest, 13, had some amazing workout, man. So it, I guess it just hit us. COVID made us all go back to basic and remember our gifts and do some things we said we'd never finish. That's a mouthful right there. I think people yeah. watching need to uh, realize that. And uh, when it first hit, you know, obviously some people's lives were really, their foundation, yeah. was, foundation shaken in that, you know, jobs gone, all that kind of stuff. But for those who can look at it as the best of times and the worst of times, now's the time for you to sit down. What, what, that, what that, else that you got put in there? You are so prophetic. You've you, been you're sitting so on prophetic. it. He's like, all right now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and, and I think that's, that's going to be the, 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 t the takeaway. Um, yeah. As a pastor, let me be a pastor for a minute. The Bible says, but we are not a priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. All that we go through, he was touched as like we are. Yeah. And I think we got to remember that Hebrews 115 text because look at us. We're all in a position now. Church as we knew it will never change. I was stubborn. I said, I'll never live stream. No. Right. I'm a ghetto pastor. I'm just going to do what I do in the hood. Now they can't wait to get that message, you know. So it's flipped. And we have not hurt as a church. Yeah. God's blessed us. I pastor uh, one of the largest churches here in Charlotte. And people yeah. still understand what real ministry is because we were put in that position. Right. Here it comes to put up or oh, shut up. Oh, did you say stop talking? You can get to walking it. Is that what you said? Yeah, and, and obviously, you know, someone once said, I think her Bishop Jake said, but obviously light shines brighter in darkness. So now's the time to turn up, not just as a church. And I think, unfortunately, um, a lot of Christians, you know, look to my church, my church. Okay, you need to turn your personal light up in whatever your sphere of influence is. Do what you can at all of us are capable of making a difference and showing Jesus in whatever way. Right. That's why he sent us out in different places. And, that, and that's what matters. It's not who does. Maybe you don't have a truckload of furniture. That means nothing. Right. Do what you can. Do what you can. Right. This is good. This is real good. This is good. This is good. Yeah. And, and that's often what I say, especially when the obstacles and the drama seem so large. You're like, what can I do? Even the notion of voting. And I like to get your take on that. Uh, I see a lot of people are waking up because they've, seen stuff going on and it seems so disheartening people are realizing uh, that voting is important but because of even here in atlanta where i was and if you watch the news you saw the debacle earlier this week uh with our election day a lot of polling sites machines not working a lot of polling sites around the country there are less polling machines than there used to be and the notion of let's sit back and think why would they be making it so difficult to vote if voting didn't make a difference. Not not only that, and why uh, a few miles from your polling station, where it took you four, five, six, seven hours, it took them seven minutes. So yeah, I'm I'm in. I'm locked. I'm there. I I, I think we we we're, we're waking up. We're waking yeah. up. Yeah. Um, I, I was one of the ones. I just uh, finished a major song. I'm actually in my studio at home, and uh, with me, Tony Terry, uh, Terrell. Um, everybody, uh, Frank McCombs, so many people, oh. Dean Moore. I wrote a song called Let Me Breathe. Uh, okay. uh, uh, as a black man watching uh, a man die and call his mama. See, we, we all got there. We were there. The, the Instantly. Media, the media just got it. We, we understood. I didn't know at the time, I didn't know his mother had passed, but to hear a black man call his mama, we know the history. We know where that comes from. Uh, when when grandma died, you know, yeah. she called on her mama, looked like the day she was about to enter in. So so it, it was deep for us. And I say that to say this, when we say and we talk about systemic racism and people say it doesn't exist, we see it not just in po police brutality, we right. see it in the poll stations. There you go. You know I mean? It bothered me to yeah. see those people in line that long. But Crazy. we've got to be equipped, people like myself with a voice where people listen, Right. We've got to be ready. I'm going to Walmart. I'm going to buy all the little stools they got just in case they pull it here so we can sit the elderly down. <laughs> Thank so you. We got to stay in that line this year, baby. We're we we, going to make it happen. We got to. We're going to make it happen. And here in Georgia, every state is not like this, but we have, uh, I always say, the luxury of advanced voting. Some people don't have the option. You have to, right. like you're saying, pull out your uh, tailgate folding chair and sit it on down yeah. until you make it on in. But it is very, very important. Very now, important. what's your notion? I've been saying this uh, on the air, and not that it necessarily 
eases the pain, but to give people another perspective as an African-American man to think how great you are for the enemy to be pulling out all the stops, not just police brutality, mm -hmm. uh, to attack black men and African-Americans in general, like people need to, African-Americans and certainly men need to understand the greatness within them. The enemy wouldn't be wasting all this time to, to attack us Absolutely. if it wasn't something that he's trying to silence. You know and, what I mean? I Hopefully that? that helps people raise up a little more. Right, right. And I think you, you, you're spot on. And that's what's happening, you know. And we all go through it. Don't think it's just you. I moved my studio not long ago because I was never there for the neighbors to see me. Gotcha. I would go in late evenings. I was never loud. I, I, older I get, I use headphones now. So right. they just didn't understand while the lawn was kept. And it was a really nice house. It was uh -huh. in the community. The lawn was kept. We don't see anybody but the cleaning people that come over. Who are the two ladies that come over? We didn't know. And one of the neighbors, this is a great story, it's almost over. One of the neighbors was so concerned that it was a dope house. A dope, why is it a dope why house? Why that thought? What makes it a dope house? You understand me? Right. I, and when I tell you, I fell in love with the studio at the church. So I, three years of this house and I bought it. I never really went. So one day we shooting a movie and there are cars. So it was a dinner scene. So it's a whole lot of cars. And they thought that, oh, he's renting it out for parties, you know? Right. So the, the sister that worked for the company, that kind of kept an eye on the house for me, went and talked to the neighbor and said, listen, first of all, you had no business taking pictures in his backyard. Number you know, one. So, yeah, all of that. But she, 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 uh, uh, she was fired. And it bothered me so much that in 2020, we are still, six months ago, Three kids, white kids going down the highway. They was branding the flag, branding the flag at me, showing me the flag. And uh, I paid them no attention because I'm good. I'm in my truck. I got my boom, boom with me. That's my, <laughs> my boom, okay. boom. I'm fine. Listen, I hear a loud noise. When I hear the noise, I thought it was something in the back of my car. I never thought. And I noticed they, they started speeding away. Then when I get to the church, Jeanette said, Pastor Key, your, your, your windshield is cracked. And uh, she said, we'll get security, which is a police officer, which was the following Sunday, came and said, Pastor, no, it's not crack. You got a 22 bullet lodged in your um, windshield. So they literally shot at me. And I used that to testify. We're living in a climate now where it's really dangerous. It yeah. is dangerous. I'm fine. I'm 58. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, I'm straight hood, came off the street, God delivered me. I'm equipped with some some components that I think right. get me out of a situation. Right. Here's my worry. My 23-year-old, John John. My 18-year-old, Tradell. That th though I raised them real good to be solid men, right. I'm still concerned. In the situation, are they able to walk away? Right. In the situation, it's John John. And I try to tell young men, and I pray a lot of the young brothers are listening, I, we got to also know Sometimes your intelligence can get you in trouble. Uh-oh. You know, just because you're smart, don't think. Because that, that can be a weapon, too. Right, they're know? threatened by that. Yeah. They're threatened by that. My 36-year-old son in Nashville, who's an engineer, you know, I tell him all the time, Justin, I know you're smart. Yeah. Chris, Chris Key is crazy, so I know the police probably <laughs> take him on down. I get it. But we just got to be aware. We got to be there. And I, I'm so grateful that you're even using your platform to remind us absolutely that we we matter we matter a lot beautiful <laughs> beautiful beautiful it's yes yeah, it's interesting times but the, more, no weapon formed against us shall prosper no we standing no. on the promises while also moving forward and doing what we right. need and to understand do. spiritually weapon is not a gun or a knife weapon is a conspiracy no conspiracy formed against us shall prosper we got to walk with that kind of power understanding that in spite of what we saw three, four weeks ago, we yeah. still have to stand and understand. I was so grateful I got to meet the family. I own a, uh, I own a uh, security company in D.C. for 30 years, Falcon Security, with one okay. business partner, Reggie Miner, and he picked up Crump and some of the brothers and family, and I got a chance to speak to them on the phone. So it was oh. really good and encouraged them. And uh, hey, you know, we're going to come through this and listen to me. And I sound like an old preacher now. No, God's no. going to get the glory out of all that we've gone through, I think, in the last month. 
I believe it. I believe yeah. it. I think already as things are rolling, as we see the landscape around the world, you can't front on that. Like, you no matter how many racist it. people out there, you can't front on the whole world getting it. Most of the world gets it. You better watch yourself. You're talking real in here. Come on now. So we have to, even when we see the evil, we have to realize uh, who was it? Now, you know, you know the Bible better than me. But when, when the prophet told his assistant, there are more with us yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Against than you. against us. And we have to remember that. Now, for, I need to say happy Black Music Month to you as, oh, yeah. as, a, oh, yeah. a as an month. architect of the sound. Those of you Same who are month watching. I was born. It's a good month. You were... <laughs> I'm a June baby. You yeah. right. You're right. You're right. And happy belated birthday to you. Thank I'm a you June so baby, much. too. Yours was the 4th. Yes. I was June 8th. Watch yourself. So with the June babies, the June babies. The twin and babies. The... <laughs> that was an inside. People... That was an inside. They that was understand. inside. Inside joke. All right. Now, a lot of people uh, may not know Black Music Month, born in June 1979 uh, on the South Lawn of the White House. Uh, President Jimmy Carter, um, actually, shout out to uh, Kenny Gamble and Deanna Williams and those who were a part of that. Deanna's like a big sister to me. But it wasn't until years later they realized President Carter did not sign the proclamation. So actually, Bill Clinton made it official yeah. in, 2000, uh, in 2000, actually. So um, it, it, back to the whole uh, no weapon formed as one sign I saw posted right. said they want our rhythm but not our blues. Listen, mm -hmm. black music. <laughs> tell the truth. I'm just here to tell the truth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm here to tell the truth. Uh, but black music has and continues to change the world, and you're a part of that. Yeah. People, not just in gospel music, as you know, uh, hip hop, R and B, otherwise, have John P. Key on their lips. Right. Listen. I'm sure you understand that, but I was really thinking when you and Hezekiah did the uh, IG, uh, I'm going to call it a love fest, did you just sit down for a whole day and try to have to go through, because clearly you don't wake up every morning with a bowl of cornflakes and say, I'd like to listen to my discography. First of all, first of all. How did you prepare for that? First of all, Nisi, I can't stand you. Uncle John is mad at that question right there. Nisi, Vita. Let me say, I took, it took me two days and I never played Wash Me. I never played We Walk By Faith Project. I, it was it was really a pain. And the crazy part, I have all these songs. Listen, now, for you, I need to tell you, I don't listen to John B. Key music at all. I feel right. like if I ever get locked into it, I'll stop. So I once I've mixed, I moved on. Move on, okay. That was one of the most incredible two days of my life because I was able to revisit the music the session, the season, the time, right, right, you know, and 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 experience symphonio in Greek, where we get symphony, just to really hear, mm -hmm. and then I was able to understand where I really got it from. So yeah. it, it was a it was a it was an awakening, and it was really good for me because it it I, when people scream the legend thing, it also goes in one ear out of the other, but it made me respect yeah. the process, everything I'd come through, yeah. The Bible said it wasn't that she finally had a baby. It was the plight, All her right. plight to have the child. When we really start celebrating what you went through to become who you are, I'm leaving Atlanta. I'll never forget it. I remember the Katie Bowl interview. You came in. And I, uh -huh. I her, there was something genuine about your spirit, man. I found out it was longevity. It was wisdom and the uh -huh. way we're respected. You minister to people you never meet. The same thing happened to me that weekend. I was looking at the comments and I was going crazy like these people are really celebrating songs or or or, or to literally to watch the funeral the other day and hear mm. them sing two and three John B. Key songs. What impact did yes. I really have? So yes. you know, it, it, it's it's humbling. You know yeah. me, I, the, the big head thing I've never been. Yeah. Um, it's humbling to know God used you in a season to wow. sing, it's me. Yeah. Me alone, I'm standing, yeah. standing in the need of prayer. It took yeah. millions of lives. You know? Ooh, countless, yeah. countless. I often say to people, it's like the reality is you, we won't know till we get to the other side. Oh, come on. The real effect we've had. So you just have to uh, yeah. just kind of operate knowing that everything you do, positive and, or negative, right. is doing something. And that being said, that yes. made me appreciate the love fest. Because yeah. I got a glimpse. I got a glimpse yeah. of yeah. just those little 
those little um, comments being made. Thank you, Jesus. I'm able to say something or do something to inspire people. And I love homeless folks, so that, that's, my, that's my vision. And to be able to bless folks, and I bring that up for a reason, to go to somebody that would not necessarily come into a four-wall structure. Right. And to Jesus to them. See, my church wasn't built off John P. Key TV streaming. I heard it was that. built out one person going out, and we're going to go out, and we're going to get them, and we're going to bring ministry, them in. Ministry, ministry. So I saw the word not just change lives, but structure lives to become the righteousness of him. Because you walked it. That's that's beautiful. There it is. That's it. That's, that's it. beautiful. But I promise when I watched it, I'm like, how long did it take them to even pretend to figure out what they're about to play here? I just, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. And most of us, uh, well, both of you guys, I really was laughing. Obviously, all of our lives growing up with your music, singing it in choirs. And the running joke for me, for I call y'all the high note homeboys. Y'all, y'all high tenors out there. <laughs> we got to tell our choir directors, the altos, just because he did it. Don't mean I can do it. So that you were singing in the choir? Huh? So you were singing in the choir? We was trying, but we, we can't hit, you know. <laughs> I was like, that's what he was called to do. Well, I ain't called to sing that high. You understand? We got to do what we can. And now you're still doing it. I thank you. And hopefully you will never stop. I remember a while ago, uh, I heard Don, Don McClurkin said it too at one of the Praise in the Parks. So he was at Praise in the Park. I heard Fred Hammond say it before too. Uh, but when Donnie was at Praise in the Park and we were backstage and he was kind of like, you know, some something of the notion of it might be time to let the younger people. And I'm thinking, if you breathe, then God needs to use you. You're not in anybody's way. And of course, he subsequently come out with another album. But I'm, I'm wondering, like, where did that even... Right, hello, there is God. But I'm thinking, and I heard Fred say something like that, too. And yeah. I don't know where that notion would come from because I'm like, yeah. if you still have breath in your body, yeah, God still needs you out here to do what you need to do. Yeah, I, I think it's from a place of humility. Uh, uh, for the record, Donnie's my, my cousin, and and I get at him all the time because he's he's got that surprise element. He was working on a project when he said that. I go, <laughs> he's a, but uh, 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 I think we we, we desire. I, I wish. There was another outlet. When we were coming up, well, you're a lot younger than me. When I was coming up, you've got James Cleveland and Edward Hawkins opening the doors, you know. Um, and shout out to the um, Hawkins family. They lost their ba baby. They lost Carol today. And so oh. we're praying for them. But um, uh, that's my family. They opened doors for me. Thomas Whitfield, uh, yeah. Daryl Coley. I played keys for Daryl Coley for years. Um, wow. I wrote... Um, 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 so much music for so, those artists, and I never wanted to be a singer. Me, what? Never. My, my. You what? Thing. Let me tell you this story. If you if you Google Jesus lives in me, all, everybody listen. If you Google Jesus lives in me, Edwin Hawkins, John P. Key, I had uh, hired a singer to go to Houston to do the recording with me. A brother, I didn't know he was still smoking weed, drinking wine. And it was time to record. He, I couldn't find him. <laughs> so back in the day, if you didn't perform your song, you didn't get paid for your sheet music. Right. So I've been hoarse because I've been teaching the song all week. I had, uh. tons, I had tonsils then. That's where the me, 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 me song came from. So I sang that song, Jesus that Lives in Me, hoarse. So what made me say that? Well, you said the high singing brothers. Back then you had Daryl Coley. Um, Isaac Douglas, um, uh, Walter Hawkins, all wow. these guys with these high ranks. Oh, we didn't have them. So that's where I start creating the all the giggle, 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 giggle all that stuff with my voice. Because it was to keep people's attention to listen to my little song. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a John P. Key trivia in history right there. Right. But uh, man, that, yes, yeah, so that, and then when I was, I graduated high school at 14 from North Carolina School of the Arts. I moved to California. So I was Phyllis Hyman's. Uh, music director uh, for years, yeah, uh, in the Come NCO on, club. Yeah, and uh, so I worked for years. Uh, uh, I did Kyle Wendy. I played for him. I played for Joe Walsh. I produced the rocker, the white rocker. I produced his project at like 17, 18 years old. So uh, wow. I was in the game for years. And me trying to keep a little job on the piano, Stevie Wonder songs. And so I learned me three Stevie's. And made sure I locked them down real good. I tried to sound like them. There it is. Right. I see it in the pond. That's right. Our summer days. And I got my job. Let me tell you something. So 
trying to work and hustle made me create a vocal and I uh, thank God for it. I, you just tripped me out. He said I was not trying to sing. Well, I'm glad you didn't rob the entire world. <laughs> you would have right got up. a whooping when you got to heaven. I would have got a whooping. I would have got a whooping in glory. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the next song, song. Whooping in glory. <laughs> whooping in glory. Well, listen, there's a lot of new music. I know we got a remix yeah. that, that hit, just hit the scene. I made it out, of course, Praise 1025. We've been playing that one. We're going to keep on playing that. You and Zacardi Cortez with his 15 lungs. We are familiar with him yeah. and all of his lungs. What made you remix it like that? Come on now. I'm, I'm a go-go go kid in, in D.C. When I was, uh, shout out to Cheryl. Uh, when I was in D.C., uh, when I was growing up as a kid, we go to D.C. for the summer and still with my sister, uh -huh. Bonnie. That's why I scream on Laura in the song. Uh -huh. So I'm just, I was a Chuck Brown fan. I ain't ashamed to tell you. I, I was Chuck Brown all day. <laughs> so what I've done, when you talk about moving out of the way of the kids, my kids love like good music, old music, 70s. Right. Uh, 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 I could go on and on. But anyway, right. I, I decided to grab this go-go and, and make it happen. So we flip. While I'm doing an interview with Cheryl in D.C., she screamed, uh -huh. Pastor, this has a go-go feel. I said, give me 24 hours. Yeah. So we went in. And let me tell you something. When I tell you. Our church loves it. We go go all day, and I have another <laughs> remix coming right behind it. Our remix, I made it out after COVID nineteen. I was smart. I said, "Lord, uh, this too shall pass." And when the people of God come through it, I want them to sing. I made it out like they never right. sang it before. Right. So we've got the go go mix with the choir version. Then I got a go go mix with my sons, J three, John John, John P. Key the third. And Tradell, Tradell's 18, John John's 23. And we got a whole new mix, a go-go mix. We bought Petey Pablo back. The uh oh rapper. So it's me, John John, Tradell, and Petey Pablo. You're going to love it. And you're going to get that ghetto mix today. I'm going to make sure I send it to you so we can do that. You, you, got a, you got a box of mixes. Yeah, and then we got the quartet version. I made it out with me and Zaccardi. Oh, my God. Hilarious. Oh, it's church all But day. people so. need to know it. People need to know that they're going to make it out while they're going through it. So that message I'm, is I need, absolutely Tell necessary. them to suit you good, God. We need to hire you. That was good right there. We need the people of God to know in the midst of the turbulence, you yeah. can still confess. That, that was my testimony when we first started talking. God, I know what you showed me. Yeah. He said, well, we're not going to let a storm stop uh, your miracle. So uh, I'm with you. Woo! I felt that. We're not going to let a storm stop your miracle. Yeah, we have to stay focused and know that hope is everything. So we have to expect better as we walk through. That's that's a beautiful thing. I just, huh? Listen to the prophetess. Oh, no, it's just baby girl. Former Girl Scout here, Vita Howard. Uh, just girl, <laughs> be the Girl yes, Scout secret. Right, former Girl Scout. Those are my credentials. Check my resume. Former Girl Scout. Cookie, cookie seller and such. Yes, yes, indeed. Now, okay, what if, and I can't imagine it because the way you're, you're saying you started so early, I didn't realize you were a teenager when you started and Absolutely. you've been in this uh, forever. Was there any other career that you were interested in? Was it ever a, a, a seven-year-old John P. Key, when I grow up, I'm going to be? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Let me tell you something. Big dude was a ball player. I could hoop. I still think I got a little something. I am play <laughs> defense. You understand know me? I thought I was going to be a baller. Um, music kind of set in. I think uh, my football days were amazing. I got popped on an 81-out play where I forgot to run. I was so glad I got the yardage. And when I turned around, a guy hit me in my numbers. His name was Philip Gerald. He was a white guy. He weighed 165 pounds. I was oh. in, in high school. And I knew when he hit me. Well, let me put it like this. When I woke up, I knew I'd never put another helmet back on again. You understand me? It, so, so you, oh, man, you were not oh, so conscious. Me. Oh, yeah. He popped me real. I knew I would never put another, never, ever put another you... helmet back on. So I, I, I locked into the music pretty early. But uh, the music was such amazing. Even with the music, uh, I learned how to play piano by uh, stealing the $5. I would go to the music director's house, and her name's the older lady, Miss Margaret Sharon. And I was standing in her window, listening to the lesson, and I could always hear stuff and just play it. And I would what? my mama said, What did you learn? And I would play the lesson of the day by ear, looking at the sheet music. And I learned how to 
for five dollars. I would keep the five dollars and I learned how to forge the lady's name. I got busted two years later. I did this for two years as a kid. Two years later, the lady retired. My mother's here in the grocery store and asked her, How John is doing so good? He's playing for the mail course, he's playing for the kids. Course. She said, I ain't seen John in about two years. So he come around my house and hang around my grandson. Me and her grandson were real good friends. Uh huh. She said, well, and I'm getting ready to retire. So my mama goes home, tell me that she's retiring. See if I was going to come clean. Saying, y'all got a recital Sunday. What are you playing? And I went and made up a song. If you Google John P. Key, Mama's Choice. It'll Mama's come. Choice. Mama's <laughs> Choice. I, I literally went home and made up a song. Uh. I, I, and, and if you hear it, it'll blow your mind. <laughs> the way I play it. On the CD, I don't remember what record it is, but I know you can find it. John P. Key, Mama's Choice. That's the exact song I made up at age 12 or 13. Are you, so you've always been an entrepreneur, a bit of a Yeah, yeah, I was yourself. a businessman. Yes, I was an entrepreneur. Made, yeah, like, like maybe was it a, happened. I heard you say you was a cookie seller. I was a right. That was my girl's cat. He was hustling piano lessons. Hustling piano lessons. Learn how to play, and um, that created my ear and my ability to write songs, I can write like that. If you told me now, Pastor Key, I'm, I'm gonna give you a title. Within 24 hours, I could have an entire song just with a title. And it's something, it's something weird. I never, I've never confessed this live ever in an interview. I can literally see a person, like if I wanna write for Vanessa, I see Vanessa walk into the microphone and she starts to sing and that's the song. So it's crazy that sounds. That's the little gift God. No, gave. that's the gift God gave you. That's how you work it out. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> it always amazes me. And, and you know, that's just how dope God is. He puts everybody has their own special touches yeah. and and yeah. you can't always explain it. What's easy for another person is crazy to another. I watch someone sculpting and stuff. I'm like, this is crazy. Right, right, right. How did you know this look, is look, painting, painting a picture upside down? That like that. I've seen that, right. And then you can see some people who are disabled and still painting using their toes or something, you know. So when God has given you, literally, I've, now you're going to make me go find a video. You thought, you thought I made that up. Someone literally, oh, I'm, I'm trying, Jesus, help. Literally, I've seen it. I've seen it. And it is the you. gift. And everyone has to realize whatever your gift is, you do have one. So I need people. Yeah. That's my prayer with this uh, pandemic that people do kind of lean in and figure out Fine. what they're supposed Fine. to be right. Uh, Erwin McManus, I think is a church in California or something. I saw him on TV talking to some uh, younger people, folks losing their job, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> he mentioned that some people would have been stayed in the wrong career their whole lives. Forever. Forever. If they never had a, you know, catastrophe, so to speak. And that's what this is, or, you know, something, uh, an ep a pandemic, an epidemic, whatever. For some people, as awful as this pandemic is, it it's yanked you out of mediocrity if you allow it to. And, and my and I, I, let me shout out to the young graduates and some of the young people. Yes, because yes. Um, and I sent a message out yesterday that just said you you, you waited for this for twelve years, some eleven, and um, some were creative and they you, uh, went on the lawn and you know, but you want. Yeah. Ceremony. So I, 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 my own sons, I had to remind them who they are. You yeah. know, Tradell was an amazing back, is an amazing basketball player. Wow. This was supposed to be his year. Yeah. He sat out last year. And so when I went to really kind of baby him and tell him, don't give up on your dream, he's like, Daddy, oh, I'm about to do music now. He always was an amazing singer, but never wanted to sing. I could not put a mic in his face. Really? Now he's ready. He's got his gear. He's in the studio. I'm supposed to actually hear something today. I'm excited about it. When he was a baby boy, he would turn. He had all of the little uh, games, um, the PlayStation 4s and 3s. But he would turn the volume down. And while he was playing the games, he would sing the old hymns of the church. What? I don't even know where he would, found some of them. There's not a friend like the Lord Jesus. I'll be interrupted. Yeah. So, look at what you said. It's so true. The pandemic caused a shift to get some people on track. Right. Path. Yeah, so I agree with that. Right, right. Wow, that's amazing. So yeah. tell me this. I know everyone wants to sing with John P. Key. Is there anybody 
that you have said, now if I could do a little duet or something with this person, that, that might be all right. There's one more person. And well, we're oh, make it happen. We're I think I've, I've, I've sang with everybody. I've worked with producers. But I must do a song with Al Green. I've got to do it. I've already written a song. So if Al... Oh, you said you already ready. I'm ready. I'm ready today. I'm, I'm ready today. I ain't wow. Ready. Yeah, I'm ready today. I'm ready today. And I got the song recorded. What was I had it in my flip phone. I, recorded, uh -oh. I wrote it a long time ago, and I still got my flip phone. So you, like you said, did you just say flip phone, my brother? Flip phone. I still got it. Yeah, but Al Green, I'm a, I'm a fan, and I just think he and I would rock something so hard. I just... Mm. I can own... That's, that'll be a whole lot. I think we'd have to take a vitamin before we listen to that. Yeah. That would... it need a probiotics and some immune boosters or something. We might need... Hey, you, so your influence. You from the A. I know y'all got, got connections. We're going to make it happen. But I put a word into him. I think we're going to make it happen. We'll That's awesome. Now, you said something, too. I just want to touch back. You mentioned, I think, your kids like a lot of older music. I've been noticing that a lot. Like, my nieces and nephew, my youngest nephew is 16. Mm -hmm. And sometimes my sister will text me, who is this old man? He'll be up there playing Al Green, playing Bobby Womack. And this is not music he grew up listening to. A lot of kids... And even, I'm kind of like a 90s baby. I grew up on, you know, yeah, I went to church, but, you know, uh, 90s hip-hop and R&B is, you know, that's kind of the soundtrack of my life. But for, they're like listening to my music. Auntie Vita, who is that? You know, I think there's, people are getting back to, I don't want to say otherwise it's fake music, but like some real right. music. Are right. you seeing that a lot? or, or? Well, it, it, even with the go-go. We had like loops that we made for, and I stopped the whole production process and said, "No, no, 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 we're going back to the real Chuck Brown. We're going back to <laughs> we're going back to D.C. in the summertime when we go to the wow. park. Yeah, Peter, so Peter Green. So when you hear it, it you're gonna love it because it's straight drums. Uh, I got my uh, son Tony uh, from Chicago playing bass. It's 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 just straight old school, authentic. I, I love it, authentic. Yeah." Yeah. I think, and I, I think production is going there for a reason, like you said, because that is our soundtrack, and the babies are looking for something new. And, the and it has heart, right? Yeah, and it, it has heart. Ooh, it has heart. That's amazing. It's, um, and that's why it still trips me out when you see people pre pandemic, of course, artists going to other countries that aren't English speaking, and the artist is on stage, and the crowd is going bananas. Uh, I remember I had the opportunity to go to London long ago mm -hmm. and uh, with the delegation of music people i used to work at a music organization out of philly i'm from jersey used mm -hmm. to work in philly we took a you know conglomerate of people to to london for this thing with you know the black folk over there and the music and us we had jimmy jam terry Lewis, a whole bunch of other folks and gene karn was with us you should have want to feel we went to a club and the demo was like 20 somethings well, can Jean, can she come on stage? She went on stage and she ain't even sing one of her songs. She sang like Sweet Thing. Those young people knew her wow. and they went bananas. Wow. wow. And oftentimes in Europe, it seems as if people, they really hold on to and love soulful music. I, 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 don't, I don't know what the niche is, but that's what I think I love about touring. I mm -hmm. still tour, I tour strong. Uh, we lost almost 170, close to $200,000 worth of tour dates. Yeah, with, with, Jesus. With, yeah, because I was doing, me and Kirk, Kirk was opening up, it was a, a Gene Moore. Yeah, we Ooh, were yeah. in the country. We were doing all the parks. And um, I, I just want to thank God. I want to pause and just humbly thank God that, that my demographic is all over the place. When all I get there, I got the babies, I got the kids, I got the new high schoolers, the college students, I got grandma. And, and, and I think I think a lot of that um, was even being production con conscious. Yeah, I would do Lily in the Valley and show up. You know what I mean? Bing, bing, bing. I always get right. I always yeah. get something for the yeah. kids, uh, yeah. a funk tune or something that really. Right. I'd always go back and do Mansion. You yeah. know, so yeah. I, yeah. I was able to kind of, and then I'll bring little Rufus in to do the kids stuff. So we were taking it. We we had the whole family out for the. But that's that's wisdom, and we thank God for, for yeah. leading you and you following that you had something for everybody, and it had the heart, because people connect with that. People, yeah. 
people know fake. You know if you vibe. And even if you're not a Christian, you'd be like, hmm, something ain't right. If, even if you don't, you ain't talking about the spirit. You got that from the Girl Scouts, too. Come on now. Talking about something ain't right. Hand me my badge. Right. Something ain't, something ain't right. It's a beautiful thing. Listen, I don't want to keep you all day. Yeah. Um, this is absolutely a pleasure and honor. I thank you for even taking the time. Um, I thank you. I'm still tripping. You said you didn't want to, you didn't think to sing. I don't understand. Well, this. everybody sang. The deal was it's 16 of us, mom and daddy. So to get daddy's attention, I started playing chords on the piano. The piano was never purchased for me. The piano was purchased for older siblings, Wayne and Jean. But uh -huh. I started playing these little um, heterophonic chords you know, and following daddy on the piano. And it let me keep his attention. So all the piano stuff and learning, them, you know, had to do it. I wanted something else, you know. Got you. As far as means to writing. Yeah, right, right. And so that did it. So having the privilege of working and writing for so many artists was always a blessing. I just never took, like, even with my solo records, my, my, my crew, Sheila, Jeanette, some of the people in staff, I was, Pastor, why don't you sing the whole song? You always got other people coming in. Somebody <laughs> gave me an opportunity, yeah. and I, whatever I can do to be a blessing yeah. to some of these young artists, because we've got some great artists out, you know, that people will probably never hear. Right. Uh, so, um, and I want to fix that. I've got a TV show, MTV channel, called The Critique Cafe. We're working on it. We're going to get all the particulars, because I want to go in cities, and I don't want to just find a singer. Where's yeah. your unit at? Where's the right. band you've been working with? Right. So I, I might give you a call. I might need, I just might need a, a Girl Scout to sit aside oh! to hit me. On here. my honor. On my honor. <laughs> I love it. God bless I love you. It. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For everybody who can't get to you face to face, even virtually, and say thank you. Mm -hmm. I thank you for telling God yes. I thank you for wow. the hits. I thank you for the memories of me and Nisak singing in the children's choir, your song. I thank you. You keep going strong, and we better never hear out of your mouth that it's time for you to go anywhere to let anybody else do nothing. <laughs> so everybody listen. Yes. She just gave me a title of a song. I'm uh -oh. going to write it, and we're going to take some time. We just decided to do this today. We need a week of advertising so everybody can come on and check us out. You just said, thank you for telling them yes. So tonight, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to be in. I told him yes. We're going to get this song. I'm going to write that song. That's going to be an amazing song. You and gonna I'm going to see if cry. I can give you a little bit of Girl Scout publishing. If I, can get some. I, I cry on song. Fridays. That's beautiful. It, I, it came from my heart. I really yeah. mean that. I am very I grateful. It. I'm very that. grateful. Well, you know Praise 1025's loves you. Look at you. I, I told him yes. I told him yes. That's oh, it. come on, somebody. Get some thin mints with that and a little glass of milk. I, that'll preach for you, right? Pray for me. Pray I love me. you. I haven't had my lunch. God bless you. You call on us. You know we love you. I love you. Continue to do great things. I pray Thank that the you. hand of the Lord stay on you and your family. We love I'm you. Mir I'm mirroring all that back to you again from the day we met. Your genuine heart has always been there. I appreciate that because in your industry, we need to see more of that. Praise God. Praise I God. Love you. Love you. Bye bye. Uncle John, y'all follow me on Instagram. Key Twit. Follow. -E -T -W -I -T. follow me. Follow Uncle John now. I love you. Bye bye. Bless you, baby.